Hey guys, this is Mark for Nerd News Now from the Kingdom of Geekdom on WoodlandsOnline.com and I'm here with a very special guest, Sean Patrick Flannery. He will be at Fandemic Tour September 14th through the 16th at NRG right here in Houston. Sean, very awesome to talk to you. Uh, most people know you from Boondock Saints, Powder, you were on Dexter Season 8, uh, but they may not know that you have a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt and you've even written a book. Those are all true, yeah. And you're probably right. A lot of people don't know, but and that's okay. That's okay. Um, you know, I, I, my passion trains bifurcated along the way, and uh, <laughs> I have a, a handful of things that I wanted to do. But Brazilian Jiu Jitsu has been a passion of my life for a long time. You know, I, I discovered martial arts when I was nine. So that's where that path started long before acting or anything else. Um, and I actually little known fact is I moved out to LA to become a writer and uh, the acting kind of fell onto me I, I did acting in university obviously that's where it started right down the street University of St. Thomas and uh, I wrote a piece of children's theater and packed up my car after school and drove out to LA uh, to be a writer and uh, then subsequently I got an agent from seeing me in something and she said hey let me submit you on some commercials I said yeah, if it supplements my income, and then I got a handful of those. And then she said, let me submit you on some theatrical. And next thing I knew, I was on a plane to London to go shoot Young Indiana Jones. So it kind of put the writing on a, on a back burner for a while. And just about three years ago, I took a year off to write, write my first uh, full-length manuscript. And uh, it's out today. Got it published. And I recorded the audio book. Right? Jane 2, yeah. It's called Jane 2. And if anybody out there wants to read it and you do, please send me a message on Facebook and let me know what you thought. It's important. And you know, I've never asked that about a film or anything else, but uh, the book, if you do give it a read, shoot me a message on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Let me know your thoughts. And now the story is based in Texas, correct? It is. It's a love story to Texas, to a girl I met when I was eight years old that changed everything I thought I knew about the planet, and uh, to my granddaddy. So uh, it's, uh, it's a very personal story about you know some of the most important moments in my life so i hope uh if people do read it i hope they enjoy it well you're surely a jack of a jack of all trades for doing that and uh you know it's w one of these things where i've heard that you're so good with your fans and it's it's i imagine when boot knock saints came out quick trivia question how many theaters was it released in two Five, five, but close. But it made just over. <laughs> it made it made just over thirty thousand. Yeah. Yet somehow, uh, it then, you know, and there was all these kind of distribution issues. Then it became a uh, something that you had to go get exclusively from Blockbuster. And kids, Blockbuster is this place where you used to get VHS tapes. And kids, VHS tapes are what we had before DVDs. It's like a big, big red box the size of a yeah, building. Yeah, it's a big red box you can walk into and find all these tapes that were very fragile and who knows how they lasted as many years like as they did. A lot like big 8-tracks. You put them into a big box and then a movie happened. It's crazy. But I remember being so excited when I went to Blockbuster way back then and seeing this movie that I heard about but I couldn't get to because I was in uh, Houston at the time, probably on my way to Austin. But it, you know, the theaters were probably what LA and New York, maybe, or that that was released. But you see this tape, and you get your hands on it, and then there's just like this incredible word of mouth. And now today, uh, you go to a lot of conventions. I go as a fan. I've seen, uh, I've been to a few Texas conventions that you've been at. I've seen you from afar. The way you interact with your fans, um, I've seen things they post like on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, and you were just at the one, I think, Scares for Cares. Yeah, we, 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 we did a, a really good one, myself and a couple of friends, Zach uh, Galligan, uh, Tommy Flanagan, uh, Costas Mandalore. We did, and it's for a good cause, so it's for charity. Spent three days meeting people, and, and I actually love doing that. You know, it's uh, the currency in my job is not just financial, it's, it's when you do film. There's nobody, there's not a crowd in front of you. The camera operator, the boom operator, they're listening to see if a plane flies over. The camera operator's looking to make sure you stay in frame. 
the minute they say cut and we got it, move on, they're picking up their camera and they're moving. They're not listening to the story that you're telling. So if you want any feedback, you got to go to these events because it's not theater. Theater, there's, you know, people right in front of you. You tell a joke, they laugh. You get immediate feedback. Something emotional, they feel it as well and they let you know. You can see it in their eyes. But you don't do that with film. And uh, for that reason, I, I, I actually love hearing from the people that see the pieces of art that you've made and, and, and they, they convey what it meant to them, why it meant it to them, where they were when they saw it, how it affected their life. And to me, that's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's an important element of, of being in this industry to me. I, and, and I'm sure a lot of people don't feel that way, but to me it is. And, and obviously like businesses are about money, but, but everything else just supersedes that to me because it's like this movie uh, made just around thirty thousand dollars. Yet, how many hundred million dollar movies do people just not care about, and they're not going up? I'm sure you get approached wherever you go uh, for Boondock Saints, and people telling you how important that film is, and then Powder, of course, things like that. Um, yeah, I mean, how many chariots of fire tattoos have you seen? Uh, well, this morning I saw one. Yeah, but, one, one. Yeah. How many boondock tattoos have you seen? Uh, two. <laughs> two. So see, it's, D- it's a, just it's this a 200% now. increase. Yeah. I actually still have my Boondock Saints t-shirt that I bought from a Hot Topic is like that right? 10 years ago. That's yeah. rad. Um, so with Pandemic, uh, now this is a, a new convention. Uh, this will be like the second stop. Uh, it was originally supposed to be here last year, but then Harvey happened. Where were you when Harvey happened? I was about uh, 15 miles from here. Um, I bought a house about 200 yards from my dad. So I kind of go back and forth LA to Houston and I happened to be here when Harvey hit. So uh, I watched the whole thing happen. I was filling sandbags. One of my neighbors, uh, water was starting to come into his house. I was lucky enough that the, the foundation was high enough that we didn't really get too threatened. I mean, the yard filled up. It's like the, 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 the drainage in the front filled up um, but it didn't come close to our to, to entering the house. But uh, my neighbor did. So, I mean, I saw it in real time. You know, then you drive around, and even after the water subsides, when the hurricane passes, you you, you drive down the street, and people are going about their business. It's only a few weeks later that slowly things start to come out of the house. You see them stacking drywall, pulling carpet, and you realize that wow, it was up to the top of their front door. You know, when you start driving, because nobody left their house. I didn't see. You know, you saw on the news how the overpass is underwater, but you didn't drive there to see it. You couldn't. It's only a helicopter. And uh, so, so to really see the, 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 the devastating effects was kind of, it's kind of crazy, you know. But, you know, the city all banded together. Everybody helped each other, and uh, we got through it. But, yeah, it postponed the first event. It was, yeah, and I was looking forward to that, but I understood that was, that was the best move to make. And it's just I think that people are really going to – enjoy this happening now because they've had a, a year to heal. I mean, it's almost a year to the day that this has happened. So what, what is, in your eyes, what is different from Pandemic and, and other events? Like, what are you guys hoping to do with Pandemic to make it stand out from seemingly, you know, there's one of these a week now across the country? Well, we met uh, John Macaluso. He was uh, the, the CEO of, of, of another convention series, and it was head and shoulders when he was running it. It, it, it. it was just one of the most amazing events that we went to. Um, and now he started a second one. It, it's, it's just, uh, it's just, you know, it, 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 it's like a concert. You know, a concert's a concert, but there's a very big difference between your local karaoke singer and the Beatles. You know, it's, uh, so, some events are just, they separate themselves from the pack. We've always had, a lewd amount of fun at, at a Macaluso event. And this is his baby. So uh, it's going to be no different. It's going to be a special event. And how is it hanging out with Norman Reedus at a convention? You know, he's one of my best friends. You know, a lot of people don't know, but I've known him. I knew him five years before we got, young, uh, not young, before we got Boondock Saints, which we did together. And when he was cast, he called me. He said, you know, they said that you're going to, you're the other brother. I was like, whoa, 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 called Sure enough, it's Rita's. We had no idea. I mean, it was uh, doing a film with one of your best friends never happens. It just doesn't happen. You get to know people on the day, but it's uh, it's just a very different experience. So 
I've I've known this this cat since you know for twenty something years. It's since ninety four, twenty five years. You know, it's uh, he's one of my closest friends. Uh, we just shot an episode of Ride together. So if ever there's an opportunity to go to a different city and spend three days together, hanging out with fans, it's a it's a good getaway for us. You know what I mean? It's a good kind of little mini vacation. Now, when you're at these conventions, I assume a lot of times people are bringing up Boondock Saints paraphernalia, getting Boondock Saints picture signed, having to do Boondock Saints poses. Uh, is there anything that you wish people would bring more of? Like, does anyone ever bring you a black belt to sign? Or what, I'm, I'm assuming you would love if someone brought you a copy of Jane 2 to sign. Yeah, but. You know, that's probably now, that's probably the biggest in line is, is, is people bringing their books for me to sign, which is... There's, there's very little as flattering as that. You know, you make a movie, there's a hundred people that came together to make it great. But you write a book, it's kind of all on you. So if somebody likes it, that, that level of flattery, it, 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 it's, it's different, you know. Um, but I've had belts to sign as well. You know, martial artists taking their belts. It's, it's, there's very little that makes you feel that good, you know. When somebody takes something that you're incredibly passionate about and that they've gotten into it and they... they they want you to write your name on one of their instruments that performs that task. It's kind of, it's kind of crazy, you know. But you know, we have long, in-depth conversations about martial arts, about the book, about about various forms of storytelling and the film. It's uh, it's neat if people travel, you know, sometimes five, ten hours, sometimes from Australia, to come and talk about a book that you wrote. It's just kind of, it's weird, you know. It's it's it's. It's beyond flattering. It, it just, uh, it kind of gives your life a little bit of significance, you know. I'm not saying it's duly deserved or, or whatever, but for whatever reason, if, if, if I wrote something that moved somebody so much that they travel that distance to get me to write my name in a book, it, it kind of sits you down for a minute, you know. It makes you feel good. Now, going back to martial arts for a second, was it true that you were trained by someone from the Gracie lineage? Yeah, I started uh, with Hickson, Hickson Gracie. And if you guys don't know, that's basically like, like the Gracies are like Stan Lee, Jack Kirby. You it's, know, as it's, far as uh, comics to MMA. I mean, it's the are, Ayrton Senna of Formula One, Michael Schumacher of Formula One, Michael Jordan of basketball. Hickson Gracie is, is that guy. And uh, yeah, I, I'd love to tell you that I sought him out and I was that knowledgeable back then, but I wasn't. I was a martial, martial artist since I was nine years old. But I was at Jerry Banks. Uh, academy and this guy came in hardwood floor started putting mats down and i saw the patch it said r-i-c-k-s-o-n gracie i didn't even know who hickson was or that you pronounced it hickson i thought it said rickson gracie i thought there were two partners and i said are you in any relation to hoist gracie and you know that's like asking michael jordan if he's any relation to like dakota johnson you know a jordan you know and he's like uh, yeah he's my little brother um and he said, yeah, you know, he's my brother. I was like, whoa, you know Hoist Gracie? You know, lo and behold, I ended up, uh, long story short, he threw me a gi. He goes, Mac, put, put the gi, man, tonight you're going to train with us. And I did, and I never looked back. Oh, the clouds opened. It, it showed me the honest truth about martial arts and about combat sports, and I never looked back. became a huge part of my life. And I've heard you're very disciplined on set. Like, you come to work, you work really hard, you get, get the job done, you're very nice to the crew, cordial to the fans. Do you think you pull any discipline from MMA into other parts of your life? You know, yeah, but it's not from that. I mean, it's from my dad my granddaddy, you know. I was, uh, I mean, I've had real jobs in my life, you know. I've, uh, I worked at a donut shop. I had my first paper out when I was eight years old. Um, I put culverts under driveways, so I actually dug ditches. Um, I changed the deep frat fryer, church's fried chicken, you know. I've had real jobs. I know what they are. Never once did somebody come two weeks later and come to the drive-thru and go, hey, man, that, two, that two-piece breast you gave me, nice golden brown. That never once happened to me after I, you know, but in film, they do that, you know. They come back a year later. They hunt you down to tell you what it meant to them. I know what work is, you know, and this isn't work. You know, work is stuff that you would not do unless you're paid to do it. This is an industry where people drive out to L.A. 
find a roommate on Craigslist, earn money so that they can self-fund their own film projects in hopes that somebody someday will see it and pay them to do it again. It's not lost on me, man. You know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, it's, so so I'm, I'm not nice to people on set for any to get me further. I'm nice because I like people. I'm nice to people because it's a group of people doing stuff that they do for free, you know? It's, 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 it's not lost on me that it wasn't that long ago that I was waiting tables. It wasn't that long ago that if Scorsese said, hey, I'm going to put you in my next film, but you got to come up with 50 grand, I would have found 50 grand in a heartbeat, you know? So it, 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 it's, although discipline, self-respect, responsibility, those are all tenets of martial arts, but they're also tenets of just being a decent human being. And if I wasn't, my granddad would have backhanded me, you know? It's just the way I was raised. But it's not difficult because you have people doing things that they want to do, you know? There's not a lot of grumpy employees on a movie set. A lot of people aren't like, ugh, how many more days do I have to be in this job? You know what I mean? People are like, can you believe we're here? Holy crap, you know? And it's not lost on me. It's, it's, it's still kind of new to me, you know? I'm still kind of blown away that I haven't had to get a real job in 25 years, you know? I still, man, I'm like... I hope they don't find out that we do this for free, you know? It's, it's, that's the truth about it. I know it sounds hokey. It sounds like you're trying to be artificially humble, but, but it's not. It's, it's, just, it's, it's crazy that I haven't had to work in a long time. And I, and I hope I continue to be gainfully employed in this industry, you know? Yeah, well, being on Nerd News now, i got to ask, do you have, is there anything that you geek out on or nerd out on? Like maybe, uh, like, do you read Archie comics while putting someone in a rear naked choke ever? Or? I do all the time. No, I, I don't, but I'll tell you one thing that I do. Uh, me and Reedus were on a flight. Uh, I don't even remember where we were going, but uh, across the aisle was Adam West, the OG Batman. And so me, me and Reedus took about 50 selfies. He was passed out. He was like this. He was like, just like making a little bitty breathing noise. And we were over there going, we have all these OG Batman selfies of us making face because he was right across. I mean, you know, it's 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 like he and I both kind of geeked a little bit. We got our pictures taken with uh, uh, Lee Major, Six Million Dollar Man, uh, Burt Reynolds. You know what I mean? Uh, we also had Trans Am Hot Wheels that we had him signed. Um, man, who else? Adam West was a bit Fonz. You know, Henry Winkler. We met him. We both kind of kind of nerded heavily on that. And he told us some great stories, He's such man. a nice guy. He's such a, a nice, nice guy. guy. Like, he's one of those dudes that's so nice, you're like, is that fake? That's just him, man. He's just a nice guy. Lee Majors, Adam West, uh, Burt Reynolds, Henry Winkler. Those are four that we, we both kind of went full jelly-legged on, you know? Um, so, yeah, there's, there's, there, there, there's people that remind you of moments of your childhood, a very special time, you know, and... You know, it's funny, a lot of those Happy Days episodes had lessons in them, you know? So in a, in a, in a weird sort of way, Fonzie taught me about chicks, you know, Pinky Tuscadero, the Leather Twins, you know what I mean? It's, uh, he taught me, you know, part of my upbringing, you know? Adam West, same thing. You know, there was a lot of lessons in those shows. Six Million Dollar Man, you know, we can rebuild him. It's, uh, so I get it, you know? I get it. It's, it, it, it's a neat experience. Do you remember the episode of Happy Days where Richie had come back from the war and he punched Fonz? That yes. traumatized me. Yeah. That was really crazy. So you mentioned all those people. Is there anyone that you would, <laughs> you would like to meet now? Like, is there anyone you would geek out across, you know, at a convention from? Or is it more just about, you know, you're there for the fans? And I mean, then you if I saw with other people Richie there. Cunningham with the helmet with the bullet hole through it, sure. I mean, that would... That would probably, I mean, you know, everybody has one prized possession that you would go to a company, try and get the product. If I could see, you know, his Vietnam helmet with the meat is murder on the top, which is with the Smiths covers as well, but that's where they got it from, that Happy Days episode, I would geek heavily on that, probably. That would probably be the biggest for me. And then uh, just one more thing, you're working on a movie, or I think it recently finished Howler's. Now, this movie sounds like it is made for the Comic-Con circuit. Yeah. A dead cowboy comes back and fights a, a motorcycle gang that's werewolves. Werewolves. When does that... It's going to come out towards the end of this year, hopefully before New Year's, but it may be slightly after. Uh, but I'm looking forward to that, too. We shot it in Dallas, too. We shot it in Texas, oddly enough. Um, 
I'm looking forward to that too, man. I have that and Lasso coming out right towards the end of the year. Well, we're looking forward to that. We're also looking forward to seeing Sean back here in Houston, September 14th through the 16th at NRG Pandemic Tour. Get your tickets. Thanks so much. Thanks for chatting, man.